So far, we have discussed a sexual mode of reproduction. Next, sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves the two sexes, namely male and female. The male sexual unit is known as male gamete, while the female sexual unit is known as female gamete. The formation of gametes and their fusion includes sexual reproduction. The male gamete is smaller and more active than the female gamete. The female gamete is larger and filled with the reserve food and it remains passive. The cell formed after the fusion of male and female gamete is called zygote. The zygote divides repeatedly to form new individual. Sexual reproduction is most common in multicellular organisms. You know that variations help in the survival of a species over time. During asexual reproduction, cell divide and DNA replication takes place. What is DNA replication? It is the process of producing two identical copies of DNA from one original DNA. Okay. At the time of replication, some variation may occur, but this variation does not usually cause any drastic change. So, in asexual reproduction, offsprings are more or less similar to the parent and variation is slow. During sexual reproduction, Two types of gametes are formed. During the fusion of gametes, there is recombination of genetic materials from the two parents. This leads to greater variation in the offspring. As the offspring gets more variations, it is more likely to adjust better to environmental fluctuations. Okay. During sexual reproduction, the combination of DNA from two parents would result in the offspring having twice the amount of DNA. To solve this problem, sexually reproducing individuals have special germ cells or gametes with only half the normal number of chromosomes and therefore half the amount of DNA compared to the other cells of the body. Gametes are always haploid that means that contain half the number of chromosomes. They are formed through meiosis. During meiosis one cell divides twice to form four daughter cells which contain half the amount of genetic material or half the number of chromosomes. Okay. When such germ cells or gametes from two individuals unite during sexual reproduction, the normal chromosome number and DNA content are restored. What is the significance of sexual reproduction? Sexual reproduction results in new combination of genes that are brought together during gamete formation. This reshuffling of genes in the gametes increases the chances of variation in the offspring. Moreover, the combination of two sets of chromosomes, one set from each parent during zygote formation leads to variation within a species. 
Next is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. The reproductive parts of angiosperms, angiosperms means flowering plants, are located in the flower. Flowers are considered to be modified shoots. A flower generally bears a long or short axis. This axis has two parts. The stalk of the flower called a pedicel and stolen top called a thalamus. The parts of a flower are arranged on the thalamus. A typical flower consists of four sets of floral parts. Sepals, petals, stamens and carpels. Sepals and petals are not directly involved in reproduction. Stamens and carpels are directly concerned with the sexual reproduction. Stamens are the male part of the flower and pistil is the female reproductive part. The whorls are arranged on the thalamus of a flower in a definite sequence. Let us see the parts one by one. The outermost whorl is called calyx. It consists of sepals. The sepals are usually green, but sometimes they may be colored. Calyx protects the floral whorls in the bud stage. Next is corolla, which consists of petals. Petals may be white or brightly colored. They attract insects towards the flower and thus help in pollination. Corolla protect the reproductive whorls in the bud stage. The stamens are collectively called andrisium. Each stamen consists of filament and anther. Anther has two chambers called pollen sacs. If you touch the stamens of a flower, yellowish powder may come off on your hands. The anthers produce these numerous yellowish pollen grains which contain male gametes. Next, gynesium. It is in the center of the flower. It bears the female reproductive organ called carpel. Each carpel consists of three parts. The swollen bottom part is the ovary, middle elongated part is the style, and the terminal part which may be sticky is the stigma. Flowers may be of two types. Unisexual flower. A flower having only one sexual organ that is stamen or carpel is called unisexual flower. For example, papaya, watermelon, cone, cucumber etc. Then bisexual flower that means a flower having both stamen and carpel is called bisexual flower. Example mustard, pea, china rose. The ovary contains ovules and each ovule has an egg cell. The male germ cell produced by Pollen grain fuses with the female gamete present in the ovule. Thus the pollen needs to be transferred from the stamen to the stigma. The transfer of pollen grains from the anther to stigma of flower is known as pollination. Pollination can be divided into two types that is 
self pollination and a cross pollination if the transfer of pollen occurs in the same flower it is referred to as self pollination the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of another flower of the same plant or stigma of a different plant is called cross pollination this transfer of pollen from one flower to another is achieved by agents like a wind water or animals the ovary contains the ovules and each ovule has an egg cell the male germ cell produced by pollen grain fuses with the female gamete present in the ovule this the fusion of male and female gametes is called fertilization or syngamy let us study the mechanism of fertilization after pollination the pollen lands on a suitable stigma the pollen has to reach the female germ cells which are in the ovary the secretions of stigma provide nutrition to the pollen for pollen germination and development a pollen tube grows out of the pollen grains and travels through the style to reach the ovary the pollen tube contains two male gametes one of the male gamete fuses with the female gamete and it is called syngamy or fertilization it gives the zygote which is capable of growing into a new plant the second male gamete fuses to the polar nuclei of ovule it is called triple fusion and it gives the endosperm that nourishes an embryo for embryonic development up to a new plant the syngamy and triple fusion are collectively called a double fertilization double fertilization occurs only in flowering plants or angiosperms after fertilization the zygote divides several times to form an embryo within the ovule the ovule develops a tough coat and is gradually converted into a seed the ovary grows rapidly and ripens to form a fruit meanwhile the petals sepals stamens style and the stigma may shrivel and fall off have you ever observed any flower part still persisting in the fruit in some cases the sepals persist in the fruit also for example tomato brinjal and guava in angiosperms the seed is the final product of sexual reproduction it is often called a fertilized ovule the seed contains the future plant or embryo which develops into a seedling under appropriate conditions this process is called germination during seed germination the appropriate conditions mainly includes water air and temperature the germinating seeds exhibits future root that is radical and future shoot that is plumule and cotyledons 
cotyledons provide food for the baby plant. What are the advantages of seed formation children? Seed is a complete package for survival and growth of future plant due to dormancy of embryo, presence of reserve food and protective seed coats. Because of their tough seed coat and dormant embryo, seeds can pass through unfavorable seasons without any harm. Next, being small and light, seeds can be easily dispersed to long distances. And you know that seeds are a major item of human food. Seeds can be stored for months and even years. They will germinate only when provided with the suitable conditions. Next is an activity, study of seed structure. The required materials are seeds of Bengal gram, water, wet cloth and eraser or blade. Soak a few seeds of Bengal gram and keep them overnight. Drain the excess water and cover the seeds with a wet cloth. Leave the seeds for a day. Seeds must not become dry. Cut to open the seeds and observe. You can observe that the brown colored seeds become swollen. The seed coat encloses two cotyledons and these two cotyledons stores food for the baby plant. The embryo has two parts, radical and a plumole. The plumole is the future shoot and radical is the future root. Both radical and plumole collectively constitute a plant body of Bengal gram.